times you need WCF. Uh, take, hold that thought for like five minutes. Okay. Got it. Okay. All right. Okay. So that was our demo. Um, I'm not going to get deep into security tonight because this could easy, that could easily be another two hour long talk and there are people who are total security nerds who could probably do a much better job than I can. Uh, but basically to break it down, there's two facets of security. There's authentication and there's authorization. And the good news is whatever you're doing now for your web apps, you can do for a web API. For authentication, it supports SSL or TLS, if you're using, using TLS now. Same way, <coughs> same way your MVC or web forms apps work now. It uses the same framework components. It can also use credentials as well. You bring in the credentials, you check them. Uh, I don't believe you can, uh, or, that? you can set up a session if you want. It's not generally speaking the way you want to do it with REST, but it's that, you have that option if, you're, if you want to. And again, the good news is whatever you're using for your websites now will work for this. On the so other sir? Just real quick, uh, can you, I would assume you can pass claims in the header? You can pass claims in the header. Uh, the good thing about Rust is you can put anything in the header you want. <coughs> if your runtime doesn't know what it is, it's just going to ignore it. Or it's going to pass it up to the next link in the chain. So anyway, that's authentication. That's we validated who you are. Now what can you do? And again, it works the same as what you're doing now. If you are use, already using the impersonation features of .NET, you can keep using those. If you already are, if you're doing role-based authorization, you can continue with that as well. There's nothing special about any of the rest of stuff. Whatever you're doing now, which unfortunately I've noticed for a lot of people is nothing, will work <laughs> with Web API. Um, that's probably all we're going to talk about security tonight. Um, there's people who give, and there's a guy named Bill Senf who's a great security talk. If Sam can get him up here, definitely someone you want to talk to. So lastly, I've kind of bashed on SOAP a little bit, and this is kind of tying back into what you would ask. I've kind of bashed on SOAP, and by extension, maybe a little bit WCF. Um, that's, my heart still belongs a little bit to WCF. I've always been a weird services nerd. And the fact of the matter is, SOAP is not going away, nor should it. SOAP does a lot of great businessy things that REST just won't do. You like when you pay your power bill online and it doesn't come out of your account three times. I like that too. You can thank SOAP for that. Reliable messaging. So this doesn't mean that we can just abandon SOAP and have it go away. So don't go into your shop tomorrow and say, we're getting rid of all this WCF and SOAP, we're just going to rest. SOAP and Doug and REST can live by, by, side by side. And by using that MVC project and putting WCF and putting REST side by side, you can't have them coexist. They actually coexist very well. They have to live on different endpoints, but, but aside from that, they can call each other, they can talk to each other, either through calls or through back channel, through the .NET thing, through the shadowy barrier. But SOAP is not something we can just discard. Okay? So, if you hate SOAP, sorry, but you have to live with it. It ain't going anywhere. Um, are there any questions about Web API? I will be at the bar for a drink, one drink later, if you get drunk and think of a question or whatever. Yeah, I have a question. Do oh. you, do, does it make sense to use Web API when you're building a service that uses within an internal enterprise organization and the service is not exposed publicly? So that's a good question. Where I, I see a lot of clients use REST and SOAP. And what I see is, SOAP is really kind of used a lot in this core center of the enterprise. There's still a lot of ESBs out there, because ESBs do a great job of doing what they do. And that's also, and so what I see is internally, especially when you control both sides of the wire, SOAP still works great. And for, you know, doing a lot of workflow things, a lot of orchestration type of things, you can't beat SOAP. I mean, it's just, that's what it's built for, and it does an amazingly good job. Where I see REST is more kind of on the fringes, internally and externally. I see it more for, definitely for external, where you don't control both sides of the wire, you want to keep that communication as simple as possible, but also potentially some internal stuff where it just needs to be a quick, dirty, fast thing to have happen. REST works great for that, but for enterprises, for enterprisey things, SOAP definitely is a tool you want in your toolbox. Yeah. 
So I wrote an MVC application. Okay. And uh, knowing nothing about it. That's how most people want to. P first. So, and there's a button on the screen called Magic, which when it gets clicked, sent a. Magic? Uh, yeah, no, not really. <laughs> Let Magic happen. Okay. And it went off and called a method on my controller, mm -hmm. which hand rolled up some JSON and returned mm -hmm. it. And when you say hand rolled it up, I wrote the part, I wrote the string concatenation that built okay. the JSON package. Yeah, the JSON. Message. Response. Right. Response. Okay. response. JSON response. Okay, there we go. And then the uh, JSON response went into the web page and it uh, did, did stuff for it. Okay. So I really wrote REST, didn't I? Except I didn't have all the well, magic, or not the magic, but all the so helpers to turn the response object in a C sharp sense into JSON for transport. So, which, yeah, so what you wrote essentially was. Well, REST was already there because MVC is built on REST. It's essentially a REST framework. Um, one second here. <laughs> it actually, it was kind of magical when it worked. <laughs> so something kind of like that, but you parse it all to JSON. Yeah, instead of returning 99, I did all the construction of the JSON quotes and colons so, and commas. And so what you can do... Uh, <laughs> Oops. So actually, what you could have done. Come on. JS. Well, it's complaining about something. There's an attribute that basically says return this as JSON. And it will do that. Helpful. Huh? It would have been helpful. It kind of does all that stuff you did for you. Where I'm drawing a blank on what you? it's called, though. Where were you six months ago? <laughs> I was probably six months ago. Oh, I was probably, I don't know. Sleeping. Okay. I wasn't. <laughs> I'm, I apologize. I'm having a brain fart on that on that attribute, but there's an attribute you could have said that says just return okay. JSON. Okay. Isn't, the, isn't there like return view JSON? There's a. Uh, oh, that's, maybe that's what it is. Yeah, I think that they're right. Uh, well, we don't, we don't need to know exactly what it was, but there. But yeah, I mean, essentially, it's something like that. Right, return time. Anyway, but yeah, there's, there's Bill. I can, I can find it and uh, show it to you so, later. So that really was a web API, and yeah. and it happened to use a JSON hand constructed. Yeah. And now the only kind of difference is uh, with MVC. Now this is a MVC controller, an inheritance controller, so it's right. serving up web pages. And that's what I did. Right. Now it's going to assume everything coming in is a get. But if you really wanted to do, and this is kind of where Web API came in, which is kind of a codification of a lot of stuff. You could have done HTTP post, and now that method would have responded to a post. Yeah, we, we, we were doing one of the gets, and we had the attribute on to do the get. Yeah. Actually, I just wrote it. the attribute, one or the other. Yeah. So, I mean, you, I mean, yeah, so you've already kind of done this a little bit the hard way. Microsoft took it and made money on it, I guess. Probably. I would sue. <laughs> Not really. They're used to being, they're good at being sued. So, yeah, yeah. I'm right now. That, yeah, so essentially, that kind of would have done a lot of the same stuff. But, yeah, I mean, that's, that's kind of how it all starts. So somebody writes a parser and realizes, it's got to be a better way. Well, the thing we were returning was, mod, was pretty complex, and that's why I didn't feel bad about having to rule my own. And sometimes you have to. I mean, it, it's it's for the simple stuff. It's great. There are always edge cases, mm -hmm. so it's a good yeah. good uh, skill to have. Mm -hmm. One more. One more. What's the best practice for versioning these? Versioning your services? Oh. Well, there else. Oh, sorry, I'm out of time. No. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it so. WCF has a versioning protocol built in where you can version it via the namespace. And it will do some, and I haven't done this in like four years, so I'm a little foggy. But it'll do some kind of verge, it'll do some magic on the server and make sure that depending upon what namespace you're calling it with, it'll route to the right service. That's full of dragons and all kinds of evil things, but it works pretty well. For REST services, there's really no concept of versioning built in. The idea is once you publish this hierarchical API, you're not going to change it very much. If you do, what you're going to probably want to do is, if you, if you decide if you're doing alphabetically, 
and you decide now we don't want to do that anymore, we want to do a category, the expectation is that you're still going to have something in that alphabetical hierarchy for people. If they call, they're going to get a message back saying, hey, this has been moved, go here. Ideally, you're just going to redirect them to where they need to go. Um, now, as far as the data, this is where some of the simplicity comes in. If you, as long as you can handle what's coming back, that data could change. Now, again, they shouldn't or they should give you some warning before they start changing that object type. But the beauty of REST and the way WCI, or not WCI, Web API kind of handles it, is that it will try to map it, but if it can't, it will ignore things that don't match, and it will just substitute default values for things. For instance, uh, department was on here. If I all of a sudden took department off and people kept sending it, Web API would just go, oh, that's great, throw it out. If I added a field, say, salary range, but nobody supplied it, it would just put zero in, because that's the default value. It's pretty fault tolerant. I mean, you, you, there are things you can do that will break it, but those are kind of extreme cases that really, in the real world, rarely come up. So, you know, all of a sudden I'm going to say, hey, we're not doing persons, we're doing uh, cake recipe. That's not going to happen. Right, are you going to do that? Me? Yeah. Okay, good. That's not the that, that, that'd be a pretty extreme <laughs> business change. Okay. All right. So. I wrote a book. It has nothing to do with Web API, but it does make a great Mother's Day gift. <laughs> uh, you should buy 10 copies. I don't know. My mom can't buy all these books, guys. Come on. Uh, it's a TDD book. I talk a lot about TDD as well. I have another one coming out at the end of the year that's on Windows 8 development with JavaScript and HTML. Um, it's supposed to be coming out. I don't know. It's, my part's done. I kind of forgot about it already. Um, and that's it. Uh, unless you guys have any other questions or, yeah. How long did it take you to write the book? Um, so I wrote all but three chapters. So was about, uh, I wrote about 11 chapters, the foreword and afterward. It took about eight months of varying degrees of time. I tried to let you write at least one page a day. Some, some weekends I just worked all weekend long. Some weeks I got maybe a couple hours a night. But it took about eight months. Um, having said that, don't make any long-term plans. If you're writing a thing or writing a book, don't make any long-term plans. Make sure, I learned this too, make sure it's not something you like, because I really, after getting my half of the Windows 8 book, I realized I don't give a shit about Windows 8, and I really don't want to write this book anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I have to sign a contract, so I'm kind of stuck. Oh. <laughs> and that was just a death march. Um, and also, don't count on making any money, because I actually did make a mistake. I went, looked at my advance, look how much money I made, figured out the hours. I would have been better off moving to Thailand and making sneakers. <laughs> Seriously, so don't do it for the money. But, that's it. Alright, well if that's it, I'll... Thanks guys. Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.